Oh, okay, we're just gonna do that one more time. Hey guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society and today we are going to crochet Charlie the Chick. Charlie ends up being about four inches tall when made with worsted weight yarn. This is a pretty beginner pattern. We do a little shaping in the body, but I will walk you through it. We can go ahead and go through supplies and we'll get started on this cute little chickie. For supplies, we are gonna grab some worsted weight yarn. You can also use DK yarn if you'd like. I have Shine Worsted by Knit Picks or We Crochet. This is a really nice yarn. It's like a cotton blend, so it still has some structure, but it also is really soft. For colors, you'll need yellow and orange, and this white is for the eggshell, and I actually decided to make that a separate video that I will be posting in a few days. You can grab an E crochet hook. This is a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. You can also use a D if you'd like. Grab two stitch markers, a yarn needle, some scissors, black embroidery floss, and a needle for our eyes, embroidering our eyes. Grab some polyfill stuffing, add in some pins for assembly because that makes life a lot easier. We're gonna get started with the head first, so grab your yellow yarn and your hook and a stitch marker. We are gonna start out by making six single crochet into a magic circle. You can do that however you'd like, or I have a video if you're a beginner that goes really slow, or you can just follow along with me here. I'm going to be starting out with a slip knot, so I'm gonna take a piece of yarn. I'm gonna wrap it around my two fingers, crisscrossing it at the top. I'm gonna push that back piece to the front and then pull up on that back piece of yarn. This will make my loop. You can use your tail to adjust your yarn. Insert your hook. We are gonna start out by chaining two. So we're gonna yarn over, chain one, and then we're gonna yarn over and chain two. We're gonna make six single crochet into that second chain from the hook. We're gonna place our hook underneath the top of that chain and just make a single crochet. Here is one. Go back into that same stitch to make single crochet number two. Back to the same stitch and we'll make single crochet three, four, five, and six. And I will link all my videos down below if you're starting out to go a little slower. We are going to close up this magic circle and we should have six stitches and I'm just going to count them here with you quickly. Here's my first V, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then you'll have a little bit of yarn here and that's just from your slip knot. So we're just going to ignore that. Grab your stitch marker. You can place it on the last stitch of the round. That's what I do. Or you can place it on the first stitch of the next round, whatever you're used to. For round two, we are going to increase in that first stitch, and then we're gonna make a single crochet into the next stitch. We are going to repeat this three times. So in our first stitch, we're gonna make an increase, which is two single crochet into that same stitch. So get your hook under that stitch. We're gonna make two single crochet. Here is one. Back under the same stitch, single crochet, two. Move over to the next stitch and make one single crochet. Moving over to the next, we're gonna make another increase. So that's two single crochet. Here is one, back to the same stitch, two. Move over for a single crochet. Moving on to our next stitch, we're gonna make another increase. This is our last one. Here's single crochet one and two, and then in our last stitch here, we're gonna make a single crochet. I'm gonna change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. I'm gonna close up my magic circle again. At this point, we will have nine stitches. For round three, we're gonna increase in that first stitch, single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So here in our first stitch, we're gonna make an increase. We have single crochet one, single crochet two, then we're gonna move over a stitch, make one single crochet, move over to the next stitch and make another single crochet. We're gonna repeat this. We're gonna make another increase. Here's single crochet one and single crochet two. Move over for one single crochet, move over for another single crochet, and then our last increase, 
ending with two single crochet. So here is our increase. Move over for a single crochet. And then our last single crochet. At the end of this round, you will have 12 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. I am gonna close this up. It's already closed, but I'm just gonna do one more close there. For round four, we are gonna kind of repeat ourselves. We're gonna increase in that first stitch. This one's taken. We're gonna move over, increase, and then make a single crochet. And then we're gonna repeat that six times. So going under our first stitch, we're gonna make an increase. Oops, pulled out a little there. Here's single crochet one, back to the same stitch, single crochet two. Then we'll make a single crochet. You're like, I already did this. <laughs> we did. So we're just repeating it again. So we'll make another increase. And then a single crochet. So here is our third increase. We're making six total. Move over for a single crochet. Our fourth increase. Single crochet. Our fifth increase. Single crochet. And our sixth and last increase. And we'll end with a single crochet. As you can see here, my work is kind of going backwards around my thumb. So in the beginning part, you really need to be aware of this and push your piece back out. You wanna see the Vs on the outside of your work, and I have a whole video on this and I'll link that down below, but you'll have to probably keep turning your work out a few times. At the end of this round, you'll have 18 stitches. For round five, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. In this first stitch, we're gonna do an increase, single crochet in each of the next two. So we have one, move over, single crochet two. Here's our second increase, single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's one, two. Our third increase, single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, our fourth increase, single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, here's our fifth increase, make two single crochet, our last and sixth increase, and then we'll end making two single crochet. I'm gonna flip out my work once again. It's turning in on me. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. At the end of round five, you'll have 24 stitches. For round six, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next three stitches. We're gonna start with our first increase. Single crochet in each of the next three stitches. We have our second increase. Single crochet in the next three. Here's our third increase. Single crochet in the next three. Here's our fourth increase. Single crochet in the next three. Our fifth increase, single crochet in the next three stitches.
and then our sixth and last increase, ending with three single crochet. We're gonna end round six with 30 stitches, change your stitch marker. For round seven, we are going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our first increase, single crochet in the next four stitches. Here's one, move over two, three, and four. Here is our second increase. Feel free to mute me at this point. A lot of repetition. Here's single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our third increase. Single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our fifth increase. Single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is another increase. Single crochet in the next four stitches. And then our sixth and final increase, end with four single crochet. At the end of round seven, you'll have 36 stitches. Change your stitch marker. We're still continuing to increase, so we are going to for round eight, increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next five. So here is our first increase. Got stuck, I'm gonna start that over. And then single crochet in the next five stitches. This is our last increase round. Here's our second increase. Single crochet in the next five stitches. Our third increase. Single crochet in the next five. Our fourth increase, single crochet in the next five. Our fifth increase, single crochet in the next five. Our sixth and final increase, ending with five single crochet. Okay, at the end of round eight, we are going to have 42 stitches. Change your stitch marker. From round nine through 14, we are gonna single crochet in the next 42 stitches. So make sure and count that you have 42 because it would stink to go that many rounds and find out that you didn't have enough stitches or too many. From here, I'm just gonna show you a little trick on how I like to keep track of my rounds. So I'm gonna do a few stitches of my single crochet.
And then I'm going to grab another stitch marker and I'm going to place that horizontally on one of my stitches. So I usually pick like my third stitch and just try to get underneath a little bit of yarn. We're going to continue crocheting and then I'll show you how I count uh, when we get to the next round. I just want to thank you guys for crocheting along with me today. I thought that it was good timing for this chick to come because I know everybody's kind of over winter and March is right around the corner. And this little guy would be a perfect Easter basket if you celebrate Easter. I think he'd be kind of fun. Actually, I'm going to save this one for my daughter's Easter basket. Shh, don't tell her. <laughs> she loves every single animal I make. It's like she claims it. So she hasn't seen this one yet. So I'm excited. Um, I guess I will tell you about my new obsession and you'll have to let me know if you make these, but they're called like energy balls or no bake balls and it, they're not new. They've been around forever, but I've been trying to find more snacks that are healthy for her and for me throughout the day. And I'm like obsessed now. I've made like six different flavors and I love this like chocolate chip peanut butter one, even though I think I'm like, I have a slight allergy to peanut butter. I kind of just like ignore it and just keep eating them. But I made these pecan balls that were like amazing. So if you are into these energy no bake balls and you have one that you love, you have to let me know because I will make it. I have made so many. Okay, we're reaching the end of round nine here. You should still have 42 stitches. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. And then for round 10, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a few more stitches. Make sure to flip your work back out because when we are doing single crochet rounds, they will kind of tend to flip up on us. Okay, so working a few of these stitches. Marking your round nine is really helpful because when you're counting, you can just start from that round. So we have nine, 10, and then you can go on to 11, 12, 13, 14. And it's a lot easier to start from here than to start all the way from the bottom because we did start with smaller stitches and it's just less work. It's quicker to crochet and it just takes a second to put a stitch marker in there. So give that a try. Continue crocheting to round 14 and we'll meet back at the end of round 14. We're finishing up our last few stitches around 14. You will still have 42 stitches at the end of round 14. You can change your stitch marker. For round 15, we'll be doing something a little different. We're gonna be doing a decrease, single crochet in the next five stitches. We are going to start with something that I like to use and it's called an invisible decrease. And I have a video going slower that I'll link down below if this goes a little too fast for you. We're gonna join two stitches into one. We are gonna place our hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch. Then we're going to take our hook and go directly underneath the front loop of the next stitch and this can feel a little weird when you start out. Yarn over and pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through again. The trick with the invisible decrease is when you are having your yarn on your hook, you don't want to keep it loose to go into your single crochet because that will cause holes in your work. Keep it up to your hook and then make a single crochet in your next stitch. We'll have five totals. Here is our second. Move over for your third. Fourth. And fifth. Here's our second decrease. We're gonna go under the front loop of the first stitch, front loop of the second, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. We're gonna make single crochet five again. So here we have one, move over two, three, four, and five. Here's our third decrease under the front loop, under the next loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. Make sure your, your yarn is still up to your hook. Single crochet in the next five and that invisible decrease will get easier the more you do it. Here is another decrease.
single crochet in the next five stitches. Another decrease here, front loop, front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through, single crochet in the next five. Pull out the weird hair that you find <laughs> because I swear there's always hair in the yarn. Here's our last decrease and then we'll end with a single crochet in the next five. At the end of round 15, we are going to have 36 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. We're going to do a much needed break here. We're going to embroider on the eyes, grab another stitch marker, and we'll secure our working yarn. Grab a long piece of embroidery floss, any color you'd like. There are six strands in your embroidery floss, and I like to divide those. And I only like to use three, but it's personal preference, so if you want that thicker eye look, go ahead and keep all six strands, but I am going to put three aside for another project. Once you have that, make a few knots on the end of your embroidery floss and then insert your needle. Once you have your embroidery things all set up, go ahead and grab your head. In my pattern, it says to start embroidering between round 12 and 13, so I'm just gonna follow that and count here. I have round one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. I'm gonna place a pin right down the middle. And how I find the middle is I go up from where the back is with my stitch marker and just go up to the front. I like to kind of see if I'm centered and it looks good. We're gonna leave five stitches open in between the eyes, but since I'm going over three stitches, I'm gonna count five stitches, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna place my pin in that fifth stitch over. To get started with embroidering, I'm gonna take out that middle pin. I'm gonna flip my work inside out. Be careful not to jab yourself. I've done that a few times. Um, go ahead and grab your needle. You're gonna grab under any piece of yarn on the inside of the head. So I'm just gonna choose this piece. Watch that needle. Pull it all the way down to your knot and then grab another piece of yarn. You're gonna pull that all the way through until you have a little loop on the end. Once you have that loop, go behind the loop with your needle and pull through to make a knot. I like to make two knots to start so you can pull it through again, get that loop, and then go behind the loop to make a knot. I'm gonna go up through the stitch where my pin is. So I'm gonna take that out and just mark it with my finger. I'm gonna go from inside the head out. It can be a little tricky finding that stitch. So I'm going through that stitch. I'm gonna move up one round. Oh, got stuck here. I'm gonna move up one round and then over one stitch. I'm gonna go from front to back through that stitch. So up around and over a stitch and pull through. Then I'm gonna go back between that round 12 and 13. I'm gonna leave a stitch open and I'm gonna move over a stitch. From going inside the head out, I'm going to go up through that stitch and then back down through that last stitch that we made. You can leave the eyes like this or you can add a few eyelashes and I'll do that to show you here. I go back up through that corner stitch that I made the first one. It can be a little tricky because you try not to get in the middle of those strands. So you pull up through that stitch and then I'll just move up around and just move over a tad. Once you pull that through, you go back up through that corner stitch again. And then I just move over a little bit and I move down just to make like a shorter eyelash. You can go higher, you can go lower, just do whatever you think looks good for your amigurumi.
We're going to move over to the next eye, and I know that I want to leave five stitches open. So I'm going to count here. We have one, two, three, four, five. And now I know I embroider over three stitches, so I'm going to move over three, and I'm going to place my first stitch in that third stitch. So I'm going to go up through the head, making sure I'm on round 12 through 13. I'm going to move up around and over a stitch. I'm going to go back down through the stitch. I'm going to leave one stitch open and I'm going to move over. And I'm going to go up through the head. And then I'm going to go down through that top stitch. If you want to make the eyelashes, go ahead and go through that corner stitch again, up through that corner stitch. Eyelashes are not my forte, <laughs> but I like them, so I try, I try. To end, I want to make a few knots on the inside of my head. Grab a piece of yarn on the inside of the head, pull through, make a loop. Make sure to go behind your loop to make a knot. And I'm just going to make one more here. And that's it. Our eyes are done and we'll move on crocheting the rest of our head. We're going to take out that extra stitch marker and then we'll get set back up so we can start on round 16. For round 16, we're going to make a decrease and then we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches and we'll repeat that six times. So here is our first decrease. Single crochet in the next four stitches. Here's one, move over, two, three, and four. We're going to make our second decrease. single crochet in the next four. Here's our third decrease. Single crochet in the next four. Then we will make another decrease single crochet in the next four and I'm going to let you finish counting on your own. We will end round 16 with 30 stitches. Okay, we're gonna change our stitch marker for round 17. We're gonna make a decrease and then we're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. We're gonna repeat that six times. Here is our first decrease. Single crochet in the next three. We'll make our second decrease. single crochet in the next three and then I'm going to let you make a decrease single crochet in the next three until you reach the end.
reaching our last three stitches of this round, we will end round 17 with 24 stitches. We're gonna start stuffing our head, so go ahead and leave some slack on your yarn and then you can add your stitch marker to make sure we keep that secure. Then you can grab a handful of your stuffing and we're just gonna start stuffing this head. We did start out with smaller stitches to give the chick like a tiny little point on his head, so make sure that you stuff that little point just to give it a little bit of shaping. And then I personally like to make a hole in the middle of my stuffing. So I usually take my fingers and I smooth out the sides and I kind of burrow like this little hole in the middle. And then later when I continue to add stuffing, I add it to that hole. I like to give myself enough slack so that when I'm crocheting, the stitches aren't tight. So I'm just taking a little bit out and here I can smush things. So I'm gonna continue from here. We're gonna get set back up with our yarn. For round 18, we are going to make one decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches. We'll repeat that six times. Here is our first decrease. Once you add your stuffing, it gets a little tricky to hold, so just do your best. Single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's our second decrease. Single crochet in the next two. Try your best to not grab the stuffing as you crochet. It can be a little tricky though. Here is another decrease. single crochet in the next two. Here's another decrease. Single crochet in the next two. And my crocheting gets really slowed down when I start to stuff. That's why I wait till one of the last possible times. Here is another decrease. Then we'll single crochet in the next two. and then finish up with a decrease single crochet in the next two. We're gonna end round 18 with 18 stitches. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. I'm gonna secure my working yarn and I'm just gonna add a tad bit more stuffing once again. So I'm gonna grab a handful and I'm just gonna add it to that little hole that I made in the middle. Leave yourself a little bit of room to crochet because we have one more round that we can use to fill it up. Okay, for round 19, we're gonna make one decrease and then a single crochet in the next stitch. So make your first decrease and then single crochet in the next. I'm gonna let you guys complete your decrease and single crochet until the end. At the end of round 19, you're gonna have 12 stitches. This is our last opportunity to stuff, so go ahead and change your stitch marker and secure your working yarn. And then just stuff the rest until you are happy. Okay, we're all stuffed, we're gonna get set up again. And for round 20, we're just gonna make decreases all the way around. So we're gonna have six decreases total, ending with six stitches. Here's our first decrease. Our 
per second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. And our last increase. We are going to end with six stitches. From here, I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. I'm gonna leave a long piece of yarn. So go ahead and grab your scissors. We are gonna fasten off and then close up this piece. So I will yarn over and pull that yarn all the way through to fasten off. Grab your yarn needle. We are gonna close up this hole. Because the stitches can be a little bit hard to see, I'm gonna count backwards. Here is that little bit from my fastened off, and then here is stitch one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And that looks a little bit hidden, so that's why I count backwards to make sure that I don't miss that stitch. We're gonna start with that first stitch, and we're gonna go behind the front loop, and we're gonna pull our yarn needle all the way through. I like to turn my work so the stitch is in front of me. I'm gonna to go to my next stitch, this is stitch two, go behind the front loop and pull down. Here's three, four, five, and six. From here, we're gonna close up this hole, but I want you to keep an eye on the actual hole because we're gonna be placing our needle in there. So go ahead and close it up the best you can. And then we're going to put our needle right where we had that hole. And when you place your needle there, the hole opens up just a little bit. Weave your needle through your head. And then pull that piece tight. That helps to close up that hole and it gives you a flat finish. It doesn't really matter at this point because we are going to be placing our body there, but it's just kind of a nice technique to get used to using in amigurumi. Weave your yarn piece in really well and then cut off that extra piece. Our head is done. I'm going to smush it up a little bit and then we're going to move on to the beak next. Moving on to the beak next, we're gonna grab our orange yarn and our hook. I am gonna start out with six single crochet into a magic circle, so you can do that however you'd like or you can follow along here. I'm gonna make a slip knot by wrapping the yarn around two fingers, pushing the back piece to the front and pulling up to make a loop. We are going to chain two, and I have a video that goes slower and I'll link that below. And then I'm gonna single crochet six times in the second chain from the hook. Here is one two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna close up this hole. We'll end round one with six stitches. I'm gonna add a stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. Feel free to put it on the first stitch of the second round. For round two, we're gonna increase in the first stitch. We're gonna single crochet in the next. So I have my hook underneath my loop. I'm gonna make two single crochet. Here's single crochet one and two. I'm gonna move over a stitch and make a single crochet. Then I'm gonna make another increase. Here is single crochet one, back to the same stitch two. Move over for a single crochet. And then our last increase. Ending with a single crochet. I'm gonna close up this hole. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. At the end of round two, you will have nine stitches. For round three, we're just gonna single crochet all the way around for nine stitches.
So that's it for our beak. I know that looks like, what is that? But <laughs> that's it. We wanna make sure that we turn it inside out because it is gonna turn in on us. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker and I'm gonna leave a long tail because we need a tail for assembly. I'm going to close up that middle circle one more time and then I'm gonna cut a long piece of yarn. We're gonna do something called a seamless join. From here, pull your yarn all the way out. Grab your yarn needle. We are going to find our last stitch that we made and it's this one. We're gonna move over a stitch and put our yarn needle underneath both of those loops. We're gonna go back through the last stitch that we made right down the middle of that B. And pull that all the way through. And that helps to make a faux stitch and it kind of helps with that little jagged edge that we get when we fasten off. You can tuck in your end of your magic circle, mine's really long, and then that is your beak. It doesn't look like much now, but we will attach it and it will look like our little chicky. Grab your yellow yarn and your hook. We're gonna start out by making six single crochet into a magic circle. You can make a slip knot with me or you can do a magic circle however you'd like. Here I'm gonna make a slip knot in chain two. If you need to watch that video that's a bit slower, I will link that down below. I'm gonna single crochet six times in that second chain from the hook. Single crochet one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna close up that hole. I'm gonna grab my stitch marker and place it on the last stitch of the round. Feel free to place it on the first of the next. Here, we're gonna start round two by making an increase in each stitch around. So place your hook underneath that first stitch and we'll make two single crochet. Here is one, back to the same stitch, two, and we're gonna make an increase in each of the next stitches. At the end of round two, we're gonna have 12 stitches. We're gonna close up that magic circle and then I'm gonna change my stitch marker. For round three, we are going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. We'll repeat this six times. In the first stitch, we're gonna make an increase. So here's single crochet one, back to the same stitch, single crochet two. We're gonna move over for a single crochet. We'll repeat that, we'll do an increase and then a single crochet. Here's our third increase. Single crochet. Our fourth increase. Single crochet. Our fifth increase. Single crochet. And then our last and final increase. And we'll end with a single crochet. close up that circle one more time. We're gonna change our stitch marker. At the end of round three, we'll have 18 stitches. For round four, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two, and we'll repeat that. So here's our first increase. Move over for a single crochet. Move over for your second single crochet. We'll repeat that. Here's our second increase. Single crochet in the next two. Our third increase. Single crochet in the next two. Here's our fourth increase. Single crochet in the next two. Our fifth increase. Single crochet in the next two. 
And then our sixth and final increase, single crochet in the last two. We're gonna end round four with 24 stitches, change your stitch marker. For round five, we are going to increase in that first stitch, single crochet in the next three stitches. Here is our first increase, single crochet in the next three. Our second increase, single crochet in the next three, and then I'll let you guys count on your own for an increase, single crochet in the next three. Finishing up here for round five, we'll end with 30 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. Make sure you count that you have 30 stitches at this point because we are going to be doing a, a single crochet round. So we will single crochet in the next 30 stitches. After doing the increases in things and having to think about it, it's sometimes nice to just do a single crochet round and just not have to think, you just crochet. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like a little relief. After this round, we're gonna be doing a little bit of shaping for our body. So we're gonna be doing a few different decreases and single crochets. So I will walk you through each of those steps. Just take note that when you're doing the single crochet rounds, your work will tend to turn in on itself. So when you're all done, we just wanna turn that back out so that the right side is facing us. We're gonna change our stitch marker. For round seven, I'm gonna go through each step. For the first stitches, we are going to make three decreases. So we are gonna make one decrease, we're gonna make a second decrease, and then a third decrease. We're gonna single crochet in the next five stitches. So here's single crochet one, move over two, three, four, and five. And then we're gonna make a decrease We're gonna single crochet in each of the next five stitches again. Here's single crochet one, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna make another decrease. We're gonna single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Here's one, two, three and four, and then we're gonna make another decrease. We're gonna end with four single crochet. Here's single crochet one, move over two, three, and four. 
change your stitch marker. We're already starting to see the shaping happen even with just one round. We're gonna end round seven with 24 stitches. For round eight, we are going to make three decreases once again. Here is decrease one, two, and here's our third decrease. Things are getting a little bit weird to hold, so just take your time and hold however you need to to feel secure. We're gonna single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's single crochet one and two. We're gonna decrease in the next. We're gonna single crochet in the next eight stitches. I'm just gonna put in my tail there. So here's my last stitch that I worked into. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell which stitch to go into. So I'm gonna scooch over to my next stitch and we'll make eight single crochet. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We are going to do another decrease. We're gonna single crochet in the next two stitches. Here's one and two, and then we're gonna end with a decrease. We're gonna end round eight with 18 stitches. For round nine, we are gonna single crochet in the next 18 stitches. We wanna make sure that we have 18 stitches, so make sure that you count. And then we'll just single crochet all the way around. I haven't crocheted this body in a while, and I forgot how awkward it is when we're so used to just crocheting a nice round circle and increasing that it can just be a little bit more difficult to hold. I was struggling a bit. <laughs> so if you are to just take your time, it's totally common to just figure out a new way to hold things and just go slow and there's nothing wrong with that. We're reaching the last few stitches of round nine. We're still gonna have 18 stitches at the end of this round. We're gonna change our stitch marker. From here, I'm gonna grab another stitch marker to secure my working yarn, and we are going to start stuffing this body. Grab a handful of stuffing. We really wanna make sure that we get that little booty piece that we made. We worked so hard to make, so let's make sure we stuff it. I don't wanna stuff it so firmly that I can't continue to crochet, so just add, we can add a little bit more later. For round 10, we are going to start by making three decreases. Try not to grab your stuffing as you crochet, so I like to kind of hold it down with my finger. Here's our first decrease. Our second. and our third. We're gonna single crochet in the next six stitches. And then we're gonna end this round with three decreases once again. At the end of round 10, we will have 12 stitches. We're gonna change our stitch marker. For round 11, we are just gonna single crochet in the next 12 stitches and then that will be our last round. So just single crochet all the way around. 
This Amurumi project is actually pretty quick and the assembly is minimal. So this is a really great project if you are short on time, but you want to make something special for somebody. And it's great for spring. It's great for Easter. This chick would just make a really cute gift for somebody. At the end of round 11, we'll have 12 stitches. We are going to leave a long tail for assembly, so I'm leaving an extra long one. We're gonna yarn over and pull that yarn all the way through to fasten off. You can take out your stitch marker. Before we finish up, I'm just gonna add a bit more stuffing because I wanna get that front part and the neck. Okay, we're done with our body and we're gonna place that to the side while we make the wings. Moving on to our wings, we're gonna grab our yellow, grab our hook. We are gonna start out by making six single crochet into a magic circle, so do that however you'd like, or you can make a slip knot with me. I'm gonna insert my hook and chain two. I'm going to single crochet six times in that second chain from the hook. Close up that magic circle and then grab your stitch marker. For round two, we're going to increase in each stitch around. So here we're just increasing all the way around. Make two single crochet in each stitch. And this is it, this is all our wing is, it's just two rounds. Make your last increase. We'll have 12 stitches at this point. You can close up that middle circle and then I'm gonna take out my stitch marker and I'm gonna leave a long piece of yarn for attaching. We are going to make that seamless join once again so you can pull out your yarn. I'm gonna insert my yarn needle. I'm gonna find that last stitch that I made, which is right here. I'm gonna move over a stitch, go underneath both loops, and pull my yarn needle through. Then I'm gonna go back to that last stitch that I made, and I'm gonna go right down the middle of that V. I'm gonna pull that through making a faux stitch. I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle because now I have to weave in that piece. And this part is a little bit tricky because things are really tight back there, but just try the best you can. You're gonna rewind the video and make one more wing and then you can place those to the side and we will go on to assembly next. Moving on to assembly, we are going to assemble our beak first. So grab your yarn needle and some pins and we will get started. For my pattern, it says to attach between round 11 and 12 and 14 and 15 and you can count and check it out if you'd like, but we're just going to eyeball it and see where we like it. I like to place that bottom strand on the bottom. And in my original pattern, I had left the beak kind of round like that. And if you like that look, feel free. For this one, I'm gonna kind of smush my beak a little bit to look more beak-like, <laughs> if that makes sense. 
I'm gonna place one pin in here to hold it in place. I do wanna recommend these heart pins. They are really sturdy, and when you just need one pin for assembly, these are really helpful. I do use the round pins a lot more when I'm doing like the body and other parts, but these heart pins are just really good for holding one thing in place. Let's get started by grabbing our yarn needle and getting our yarn set up. I'm gonna start out by going underneath a stitch of the head. And since we are putting the beak on the face, I try to grab a stitch that's directly underneath where I want the beak. So here I'm going underneath a stitch of the head. I'm gonna pull that through and then I'm gonna go underneath a stitch of the beak. I'm starting right next to that last stitch that I made. Each time you see me looking to make sure that uh, the beak is in place and I think that's really important because things can get out of whack really quickly. Here I'm going underneath a stitch of the head and then I'm going to grab underneath both loops of that next stitch. Make sure that you're grabbing both loops of the beak. I'm just double checking. I want to make sure that I'm in the right spot. Since I'm attached, I'm going to take that stitch, that pin out. Now I'm going to start going around in a circle. So I'm going to go up underneath the stitch of the head, then underneath a stitch of the beak. I think I grabbed the inside of my uh, magic circle yarn there. So I'm just tucking that back in. I'm grabbing underneath a stitch of the head and we're just kind of going around in a circle and then I'm grabbing a stitch of the beak. Okay, I'm going underneath the stitch of the head and again I'm seeing where I want that beak and I'm trying to go right underneath it. I don't want my orange yarn to stick out too much. Okay, we're going to grab a stitch of the beak. And I'm just going to go a few stitches straight across that row. Okay, it's still looking good. I'm checking with every stitch that I go. I'm going to kind of go down and on a slant now. I don't want to keep going straight across because then my orange yarn will really show. I'm going to grab a piece of the head. And I'm going to go up through a stitch of the nose. Okay, I have about two stitches left. So I'm going to go see where I want to pick up that stitch because I want it to go underneath the beak. Okay, now here I'm noticing if I go up through that stitch, it's really going to show. So I'm going to take that out and try to pick another stitch. Here, I'm going to go move over so it's not so visible and it'll kind of be hidden underneath. Okay, here's my second to last stitch. And I'm going to go up kind of back to where I started and up through that stitch. Grab your last stitch of your beak. You can weave in your yarn really well, or you can make a knot like I do here. You can go slow on your last stitch and you'll have this little loop. And then what you wanna do is go behind that loop and pull your yarn through. And this will make a little knot on your work. And then you can weave that knot into your head. Weave your yarn through your head and then cut off the extra piece of yarn. Okay, our beak is attached. We're gonna move on to the body next. You can go ahead and grab your body. In my pattern, it says to attach the body between round 18 and 19 of the head, but I'm just gonna eyeball it here and just make sure that it's centered. I'm gonna grab those smaller pins. I'm gonna grab underneath the stitch of the body and just kind of pull it out and then attach it to the head. I attach about every two stitches. So I'm gonna go grab, pull, and then attach. 
making sure that the shaping is in the back of the head. I want to make sure that everything looks centered. Once you have all your pins in place and everything looks pretty centered, we're going to grab our yarn needle and start attaching. What we're going to do first is go underneath a stitch of the head. Pull that yarn all the way through and then we're going to take out this pin here because it's in the way and we're going to go underneath both loops of that first stitch. Make sure that you're grabbing both loops of the body and pulling that all the way through. We're going to do the same thing like we did with the beak. Every few stitches we're just going to check and make sure that our body is still centered. I'm going to go underneath the stitch of the head, take out your pins as needed, and then go through the next stitch of the body. Make sure not to skip any stitches of the body because you will be able to see that with your finished piece. So here everything looks still centered. I'm going to move on and do a stitch of the head. And then I'm going to go underneath a stitch of the body. So all the way around, we're going to go underneath a stitch of the head, a stitch of the body, making sure to check that we are still centered every few stitches. And now I'm going to make a knot again. I'm going to do this a little different than I did with the beak. I'm just going to grab any stitch here. I'm grabbing a stitch of the head. I'm going to pull that yarn needle through, making a loop on the end of my yarn. I'm going to go behind the loop, pull through, and then I'm going to make this little knot. Even if the knot is pulled out a little bit, we're going to weave our yarn in right next to the knot, and that'll pull the knot right in. Okay, so our body is in place and everything looks good. And now we're just going to add the wings. For the wings in my pattern, it says to attach between round 9 and 10 of the body, but I'm just going to place them and see kind of where I like them. I like the wings placed here, so I'm going to get set up with my yarn needles. I'm just going to assemble two or three stitches. So I'm going to grab a stitch of the body. I'm going to move over a little bit more than you would think. I'm going to grab a stitch of the wing and pull through. I'm going to grab another stitch of the body. I'm going to pull that all the way through and then grab one more stitch of the wing. I'm going to grab one more stitch of the body and then go ahead and grab a stitch of the wing. I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to go a little bit slower so that I can make my loop. I'm going to go behind my loop, pull through to make a knot. Don't need to make the knot. You can just weave your yarn in. So that wing is attached. We're going to do the same exact thing on the other side, and then we'll have two wings. Okay, our wings are attached 
And we are actually done with our chick, but I'm just gonna show you one more thing here. I like to give him a little tuft of yarn on the top of his head because I just think it looks really cute. You're gonna grab your hook and go underneath a stitch between round one and two. Just grab any little stitch. You can use a smaller hook if you like. You can cut a long piece of yarn or just use a piece of yarn that you had from one of your tails. You're gonna grab in the middle of that piece of yarn and you're just gonna pull that piece of yarn through. Make a loop on one side and then just grab the other end and pull it through the loop. From here, I like to give it a little bit of a haircut so it's easier to manage. And then we can unravel the yarn. You could always leave it like this, but I think it looks extra cute when you unravel the yarn and make it look a little bit fluffy. So I just use a pin here to kind of brush it out a little and the pin kind of helps it to get this little fuzzy look on it. Once you're all brushed out, you can give him or her another little haircut. And then that's it. That little tuft just gives her a little bit more personality and your Charlie the Chick is all done. Thank you so much for joining me on this crochet along. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like more videos like this and crochet tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. And before you go, I just wanted to show you the tutorial that I'll have up next, and it's for this eggshell. If you'd like to add a little bit more personality to your chick, I'll have this eggshell pattern up next week. Thanks again, you guys, and I'll see you soon.